ours will continue to be the party of those who work hard, who play by the rules, and who are struggling to raise a family in an uncertain world. Ours is the party that knows hard-earned dollars are better spent by families than by governments. Hey, welcome. We're here in the Vancouver Convention Centre. Just finished listening to the tribute to Stephen Harper. I'm joined by our Ottawa boss, Brian Lively. Nice to see you. It's fun to be here it on is. the riser. The CBC's over there, CTV. We're with the big boys. We, we are playing in the big leagues now, Ezra, and it was great being here. Last time I remember hanging out with you in Vancouver for a big political event was Christy Clark's dramatic upset in right. the BC election when we all thought it was going to be the NDP. Here... Not as dramatic, but Stephen Harper breaking his silence after months. I mean, yeah. we, haven't, we really have not heard from him since the election. And he came out. Not only did they do a nice tribute to him, but I thought that, they, uh, that he gave a good speech. He reminded us of why he was prime minister for so long, why he did so well. And, and what I really took away from it, what I've been talking about the last few days since we heard he's going to step down as an MP and start this institute focused on foreign affairs, is he was so good on the world stage, yeah. whether it was standing up to Vladimir Putin or standing up to uh, for Israel, standing up at the United Nations for real principles and values. Yeah, I, uh, I like to be reminded of the things that they stood for. And even though it's only been, what, seven months since the uh, election, you can already see how all those values are eroding. It makes me scared to compare that flashback of Stephen Harper to the reality of Justin Trudeau and his new crew. Well, one of the things that, uh, that Stephen Harper said was, you know, they're, the party will pick a new leader a year from now, and then after that, they're going to have to unite behind that leader. And, and I think the term, the phrase that he used was, probably more than we know, Canada will need a strong, united, conservative alternative to the current government. Yeah. I just hope that when we get there, that they are strong enough to defeat Justin Trudeau, because right now there's still a love in with him, yeah. no matter who he manhandles or elbows or insults or what have yeah. you. Yeah. Well, uh, there is one more thing I want to refer to, and it was before Stephen Harper came on. It was a tribute to Laureen Harper, and it was a reminder that Laureen Harper did charity work, did support the troops work, did fundraising and it wasn't about her 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 she wasn't like princess sophie trudeau demanding servants and 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 that was a great reminder too of what life was like for 10 years when we didn't have an entitled prince and princess in 24 sussex you know I, and i know that you you know uh the harpers uh, very well you know who they are you know what they're about but living in ottawa during that time if you paid attention to what would be called the social circuit, right? And I was never a part of this, but I knew what was going on. Lorraine Harper was at so many events, whether it was raising money for the Humane Society. She was part of the, it's called the Furball Gala. And it's about raising money for the people that look after the, the stranded cats and dogs. She would foster pets at 24 Sussex. She raised money for the National Arts Center. I mean, the, the conservatives were always bashed. Stephen Harper was bashed. He didn't care about the arts. His wife was at the fore of making sure that the, the gala every year was a stunning success, mm -hmm. raising money to send hockey equipment mm -hmm. from uh, southern Canada up to n remote northern communities in places like Nunavut so that kids could play hockey properly yeah. and have a chance. That's what Lorreen Harper was about. Yeah. That's what she did. Yeah. That's what she championed. And that's yeah. why that tribute was so, uh, so appropriate. You know what? Every spouse of a prime minister, every first lady in the States does charitable things. What I don't think that was particularly in doubt that that Lorreen Harper did or that Sophie Trudeau will. What I was reminded of tonight was of how modest and humble and turn the camera on the good cause. This Lorene is why I, I raised the issues yeah. that she was in because yeah. a lot of people still don't know it. Uh, yeah. Many people know about the cats. Yeah. And fostering yeah. the cats, but they don't know all the other things yeah. she did. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I watched her. I was there with the camera once, and uh, it was work to get them to allow me to take the camera in. As she was helping load up hockey bags to ship up north. Uh -huh. Well, listen, uh, tonight things just got started. I know that the Harpers are leaving. They're not going to stick around for the rest of the convention. Lorene sent me a note. I said, "Hey, let's uh, say hello." She said, "We're getting out of here. Time for the next generation to take over," and that is very true. Brian, I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad you're here it's with be a the lot rest of, fun. of our team. Right on. Stay with us for so much more. We'll have shows broadcast 
from here in Vancouver. We've got so much of our on-air talent and our behind-the-scenes team. From Vancouver with my friend Brian Lilly, I'm Ezra Levant for the Rebel.media. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more of the Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.